Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tilt Academic Success Workshop video on study strategies. My name is Logan Blakesley. I am a fifth year mechanical and biomedical engineering student here at CSU. So I've been through a lot of exams. And with that being said, let's jump right into some of our strategies. So um, it might be a familiar concept to a lot of you, but it's really important to know the difference between active and passive learning and strive to do more active studying than passive studying. So passive studying, it, you know, there are things we all do. It's things like just rereading our notes and essentially it's surface level learning that feels easier, but is a lot less effective. So lots of times we do it because it takes less time. But with that being said, we have to recognize that it's less efficient. Um, surface learning to get by essentially it's things like cramming where we're not spacing out our studying properly and just studying kind of everything without focusing in on the main points that were emphasized in lectures um the difference between passive and active studying boils down to passive studying it being exposing yourself to the material rather than actually connecting with it and applying it now on the other hand active studying involves high impact study strategies that might take a little bit more effort or a little more time but we'll make recalling information during an exam and in your life, if you're gonna use it for your career, just much, much easier. So using retrieval and recall practice, um, combining multiple ways of studying, scheduling your studying in advance so you have time to actually do it properly and engaging with the material on a deeper level are all part of active studying. So. One active studying strategy that's really good to know and kind of comes from the science of learning is the concept of dual coding. And that's the idea of intaking information in multiple forms. So if you were gonna learn like this example shows what a laptop is and what it does, you would combine your notes that you've written down about what a laptop is and what a laptop does with an image that you draw that demonstrates what a laptop actually looks like and kind of how you interact with it, right? And just the act of having those two connections to the information, um, both visual and textual, um, make it a lot easier to recall the information because your brain has more connections to it. Ideally, you could even take it in more ways like having someone describe to you verbally what a laptop is. Um, and so it's basically the concept of breaking down larger ideas into small pieces and then intaking those pieces in as many different ways as you can. Um, understanding how you can use images to represent ideas that you learn via, you know, just hearing them or writing them and connecting those words and images and concepts to as many things as possible. It's a essentially a form of critical thinking that allows you to connect information to as many different things in your brain as possible. So you have more points where you can go in and retrieve that information on an exam. So Retrieval practice. Um, this is one of the biggest forms of active learning that you can use to really perform well on exams. And it's essentially the the act of forcing yourself to recall information in a little bit of pressure, right? You can't just look at the answers and expect retrieval practice to work, but it's bringing information to your mind in a difficult way that enhances learning. So recalling information, especially information that doesn't immediately come to us forces our brain to kind of flex and practice retrieving that information and the more we do that the closer that information is to the you know front of our long-term memory and the easier it'll be to retrieve in difficult situations so speaking of memory um you know that's one of the biggest things that we struggle with is studying i lots of times hear people say and i've even said it you know I don't have a good memory. Memorizing stuff is difficult, but the thing is, if you understand how your memory works, you can leverage that knowledge into making memorization easier. So our short term memories, and I was surprised by this when I looked it up, but our short term memories are really short term. They only hold like seven to eight things for about 20 to 45 seconds at a time. And that's why when we're trying to remember a phone number, or something we're just going to apply right away, we have to keep repeating it in our heads because it resets that 20 to 45 second clock. And essentially, it's a use it or lose it. And once something's gone from your short term memory, it's gone. It's not sticking around in any form in your brain. So things like practicing your retrieval practice, um, rehearsing information, relearning things are all ways that we can stick that information from our short term memory and make it last in our long term memory. And the cool thing about our long-term memory is 
once we hold that information, it's there. Um, our long-term memory doesn't really have a maximum capacity. So once something's in your brain, um, it's there. And it may get a little bit foggier or more vague over time because you're not using it, but that doesn't mean that you can't recall it. And it means that if you do have to relearn or reuse that information in the future, it'll be a lot easier than if you were trying to learn it from scratch. And just to keep things fresh in our mind, the best way we can do that is practice retrieving it and struggle with the information. So some strategies that we can use to do that. Now, these strategies are broken into categories for different kinds of classes. Um, you know, the general strategies can work for everything. Numerical strategies are a little bit more focused towards problem-based classes, and then writing is another category as well. But it's important to note that these things can work in different situations, and it's ultimately on you to do the self-reflection and see which of these strategies works best for you. So in general, some things that we can do that are really good for studying efficiently are things like practice tests. If they're provided, that's great. If not, make your own practice tests. If you have the ability to write problems that you think will be on the exam, um, that practice in itself is great. And then you can space it out and take that exam that you wrote later. If you can do that, you're going to be set up really well for any exam. Um, using study sheets and flashcards to our advantage. Um, flashcards are great as long as we're not, you know, we're shuffling them between times and we're not just memorizing the pattern, we're actually making sure that we understand what's on the flashcards. Um, utilize your resources. So for whatever class it is, you're going to have a professor, you might have TAs you can reach out to. Um, Tilt has a lot of tutoring. You can always contact your advisor for departmental tutoring. There's a lot of strat or a lot of techniques that you can use on campus free to you at CSU that will enhance your learning. Um, Use study groups, um, reach out to your peers and try and study with people because people have different perspectives of information that can be really useful to, it's another form of dual coding, right? If you can see information from multiple perspectives. And finally, plan ahead so you're not cramming at the last minute. You know, we've all been there, but it's not pleasant and it's not a good way to learn. For problem-based classes, there are some things that you can do, but the number one thing you can do is just practice problems. Do as many problems as you can Try and do problems that combine concepts um, and come up with a way of organizing your problems and solving them in a consistent way for each class or type of problem. Because having that plan of attack going into an intimidating exam makes all of those problems seem a lot less intimidating and stressful. And if you can teach someone else how to do a problem, then you know it well enough to do it yourself. For writing, um, you know, there's some little bit different ways to approach writing, but Ultimately, it all comes down to that same active learning strategy where you're really engaging with the material and understanding your reasons for doing so. So before you begin writing, identify the purpose of what you're going to be you know, writing. What, what are you trying to get across? Organize your thoughts. Um, some people like to use an outline. Some people like to just work off of a strong thesis. You can always do both. Um, again, use your resources. So the CSU Writing Center is fantastic. You can use the Purdue OWL online for grammar tips, but whatever you do, when you're done writing, proofread it. You know, plan ahead, give yourself the time to proofread because it's really, really important. So ultimately, what you want to do to be an active learner is be able to explain why. Recognize your motivations behind the information that you're learning and recognize how many connections there are to observations and where that information is coming from. If you can understand the foundation and purpose of the things that you're learning, as well as how it connects to other things, then you're going to be set up really well for an exam. All right, so hopefully you really enjoyed that. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, you know, just view it as a toolbox. Use as many of these study strategies as you want, try different things out and find what works best for you. Um, also remember that Tilt does have a lot of resources. We have, you know, academic success workshops, tutoring, and for any information on all those things, we do have an Instagram page now. Um, so follow that if you want updates on the things that Tilt is doing and information on any of the other resources we have. That being said, hopefully that helped, and um, I definitely wish you the best of luck in the rest of your semester.